pevná nesmiernou cťou privítať na pôjde Slovenskej akadémie vied nositeľa Nobelovej ceny Klausa von Klicinga, ktorého... Pravdepodobne všetci, ktorí sedia v tejto miestnosti, dobre poznajú. I'm sorry, I'm speaking in Slovak language, but anyway, that's so... I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> obvious introduction. Uh, teším sa na tento predpoludnejší rozhovor, ktorý bude, aspoň z mojej strany, možno menej odborný, ale bude skôr o perspektívach, čo by sme na Slovensku mali robiť. Za to, že pán Klaus von Klicing je v Bratislave na Slovensku, by sme sa mali naozaj poďakovať pani doktorke Skákalovej a teda kolegom z nadácie Tatra Banky, dobre hovorím, môže to byť aj tak, ktorí teda celú túto návštevu zorganizovali, takže dovolím si im tiež zatlieskať za to, že teda... Aby sme sa mohli rozbehnúť ďalej, tak ja dávam rovno slovo pani doktorke Skákalovej. Áno, to funguje, je to zapnuté. Dobre ráno. OK, I switch to English, that there are no people discriminated. I guess most of the people attended Uh, yesterday's uh, presentation from Professor von Blitzing. I had a, a very short introduction into it and uh, I yesterday decided just to um, give a picture of my personal uh, impressions when I entered the Max Planck Institute because it was kind of a uh, shocking experience for many years before in Slovakia. And I believe there are some changes in attitude to, to, towards uh, Slovak science, but still there is a huge gap. So uh, this was why uh, we considered that having here Professor von Blitzing, and uh, he was, oh, he has been, um, for many, many years, the director of uh, one of the directors of Max Planck Institute in Stuttgart. Basically, he was uh, giving some directions and uh, influenced the principles of uh, working in science. And uh, as we know, this is one of the most uh, successful scientific institution we can say in the world. So we decided to make this session where a close number of uh, uh, scientists who are really dedicated to Slovak uh, to development the science in Slovakia and young people uh, will have a possibility to discuss and to kind of learn how to maybe improve the situation in Slovakia. So the uh, session with the title, uh, the necessary aspects uh, for making uh, efficient uh, research. So this is how I would like to give the word to Professor Van Kitting. Yes. Okay, thank you for the invitation. Okay, the main reason that I'm invited is this matter. I have always a matter with me, yes. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> and uh, I'm still a 100% scientist. So I'm not a politician, I'm not responsible for the organization. But I was also asked to say something about the Max Planck Society. I don't know whether I should start now to uh, introduce it because... We can make it in this way. Okay, no problem. Because Vera, she was for uh, 20 years at our institute. She knows the Max Planck Society and the institute. And uh, therefore, uh, I want to introduce this special situation at the Max Planck Institute. And also president worked at the same place in Stuttgart at the Max Planck Institute. and. Uh, I'm, I'm happy. I uh, was for 33 years now director at, the, at such an institute, and I know nearly all scientific places in the world. 
and uh, it's very special the organization of the uh, Max Planck Society. But there is always a danger if you are a singularity, uh, there may be a danger that it will disappear because singularities are not stable very often. <laughs> Therefore, it would be wonderful to distribute this idea of the Max Planck Society to uh, other countries. And the president told me he wanted to have something like the Max Planck. And the organization is, is very sim similar in principle, but uh, the priority is everywhere. <laughs> All the successful programs, the excellence of science. So to really to promote people and excellent ideas, persons, brains, and not programs. And uh, I, I will show you a little bit about the structure of the Max Planck Society. And I, I'm lucky that I was elected as a director. And this is the most important part, to select good people and give them the freedom to do uh, this uh, research, to give them responsibilities. Uh, I always tell all my students, you have to work also with the equipment and with the money, like your own money, to take some responsibilities because Many, many organizations, you have a situation at a certain time you have money, too much money, at other time you have no money. And the flexibility in the Max Planck Society that you are responsible, I am responsible for the budget and I can do everything. I can employ next day somebody who is applying. If I meet here somebody, in principle, he can start next week. I have just to ask the unions whether they uh, have something against it, it takes one week perhaps. But in principle, I can find scientists all over the world and invite them to our institute to contribute to our research. This flexibility is, is unique as in many, many countries. Uh, on the other hand, there is the problem, no permanent positions. Yes, uh, you can find a lot of uh, positions and you have never a permanent position even if you stay for 20 years at our institute many projects, uh, uh, European projects also. Uh, um, and uh, the scientists in our institute, have more than 50% uh, are uh, external foreigners which have no permanent positions. And this is today a general question worldwide. Uh, we put a lot of pressure on scientists, but for all others, the technicians are everywhere, as a, more secure life and more and more young students ask what happens if I want to retire. But one should, as a scientist, not ask this question. If you are confident that you are doing good science, then you should be optimistic. I was all my life optimistic for the future and was not thinking what happens in 10 years' time. Uh, there are always some program. If uh, there are excellent people, we will find somewhere a, a, a good job. And uh, so, I always try to distribute some optimism. A government cannot throw away the capital of brains because this is the most important thing a country has and therefore uh, one should be optimistic even if the situation is sometimes uh, quite difficult. I think the very first Duke uh, of says everything about the Max Planck Society because uh, Max Planck he was a first president as, uh, after the Second World War of the Max Planck Society he gave his name. And this is the most important statement uh, for the Max Planck Society. Knowledge must precede application. Uh, because today there's always a lot of pressure to have short-term results application. And the Max Planck Society, the credo is really in basic science. If you have knowledge, then automatically somewhere some application appears. Sometimes time constant is too long for uh, a government or for industry. You cannot guarantee after three years you have a product. But you are basing on new knowledge. And if I speak really to CEOs of big companies, they say we need always new knowledge. He needs breakthroughs. We are running with fast speed against the wall and we need new solutions. And up to now, industry is trying to buy information from outside, but somebody has to get, generate the knowledge. And 
as a Nobel Prize winner, it's always much easier. So when I got the Nobel Prize, I spoke to our Minister of Science and Technology, he said, okay, what type of name of program you need to be supported? And I said, what I'm doing, I'm generating new knowledge. And I had a program from the government with the title Generation of New Knowledge. It was connected to semiconductor devices, new quantum devices. So I had this program and freedom to set people from industry, from other uh, institutions, to make a consortium. And I had the support for 10 years just under this name. Normally you have to change the name because nobody wants to have the same name for a long time. And this is one of the problems, you have to find a new name which covers the same field because you are expert in a certain area. Uh, but this was the most successful program and even the people in the industry, the Siemens company Daimler, IP at this time, they were about this. They heard what we are doing in science and they said this was the most successful scientific program they contributed. They were not actively involved. But one message to me, uh, for the industry is always, you need a competent group of people which can understand the language of the scientists. And therefore I'm strongly against that all companies, the, in the stock market, the price increase, if they close down the research group, uh, but you need people in the, in the industry which are competent to interact with the outside world, not just to buy knowledge. And uh, this is one of the fights I am having, but unfortunately, this seems to be very difficult. We have not uh, such uh, uh, groups like IBM and Bell in the United States, which was very successful companies, but uh, when they were, uh, lost their monopoly for, for telecom or so, then they gave up a lot of the uh, research. And I know only in the world one industrial uh, company which is doing very fundamental basic science. This is a Japan NTT, in my opinion. They have a research group just for basic science. And um, I think if you have enough money in monopoly, then you can have uh, uh, such possibility. But today, I see a disconnection <coughs> between industrial research and academic research. Okay, Max Planck is a singularity in this respect, and here you can see the mission and the guiding principle of the Max Planck Society. Cutting edge basic research, strictly curiosity driven and quality controlled. I have never to propose what I want to deliver in five years' time. I have to demonstrate that in the past I was at the top worldwide in my science. So we have an evaluation afterwards but I have never to promise something what I want to deliver. Because I have the experience, I was always successful if I deviated from my vision to go. Because if you're working at the limit of your knowledge, there are always some walls you cannot surpass. And you have to find some other way to optimize your results. And this is very important, to give responsibilities and freedom to the people which are doing the science to optimize the research possibilities. And this is possible in the Max Planck Society. I can start tomorrow with brain research if I have a clever idea and I can demonstrate after three years' time that I'm worldwide accepted in the top leader for this research. So this flexibility is possible, but gives you also a lot of responsibility. So you see, autonomy, scientists decide upon, uh, upon science, and the Hanak principle, people, not programs. The most important part is the selection of good people. So when I was selected as a director of the Max Planck Institute, I knew that for my whole life, I have a, I have a budget which guarantees to have a group of at least six to 10 people. I have investments, I have running costs, I have never to write a proposal if I keep this small group. So if you want to have extra money, you have European money or government money, then you can have uh, more activities. But I am absolutely independent with a small group for my whole life. The biggest penalty is if the international evaluation reports to the president, so I am well below 
uh, international standard, and this report happens two times, my budget will be cut by a factor of two. So this is the biggest penalty I can have in my whole life. But you see, after 12 years, it may happen, and then, then if I do nothing at all, then I end up at the retirement age, at least with 30% of my original budget, if I do nothing. But this doesn't happen if you select good people which are uh, enthusiastic. So long-term trust system and uh, significant uh, core funding for high-risk uh, projects. And so I have to guarantee, fortunately also the Max Planck Society has a guarantee from the government to have a stable uh, budget. So we have agreement with the government, always for five years or for the longer term, that every year we will get three or five percent more money and are absolutely flexible. Our Minister of Science and Technology was very surprised when he asked me, do you need more money? I said, you will kill my research if you increase by factor of 10 my, my budget, because then I am busy to, to buy new things to be more independent, not to cooperate with other people. It's much more important to have stable situation, not step-like situation. The most dangerous thing is to cut down something and not like an industry, you can fire people and then after five years you can hire them. This doesn't work for top level people. You need to trust, you need the continuity. And the shortest time constant to reduce something, is in my opinion, three to five years to keep running at least PhD work. Uh, so the step like changes is the most dangerous thing for science. Um, and therefore, I always uh, ask to have at least a transition period for, of three to five uh, years if you want to change something. So no step like increase, no step like decrease of the budget. Uh, even if it sounds with 10% uh, uh, or 20%, relatively small number. But you have fixed costs and the most important part are young students normally. And if you have to save money, you save exactly as the biggest resource of an institute, the, the brains of the, of the students. Okay, and the result, fortunately, the Max Planck Society has nearly all of the Nobel Prize winners in Germany. This is the result of the basic research. And this is our good uh, yes, asset. If you go to the politicians, they say, okay, Nobel Prize winners, they count something. Therefore, he believes that you are doing good work, and therefore, he has still the freedom. The, the money comes from the government directly to the Max Planck headquarters, and then the money goes to the institute, so the government has no influence on the scientific projects, on the science done in the institute. And the people in the institute, they are responsible for the research. And you should know they have many of these Max Planck institutes. These are the sites in Germany. In totally, we have 84 uh, Max Planck institutes distributed in different areas. And uh, also some experience with foreign institutes, the only full Max Planck Institute outside of uh, Europe is in Florida, in the United States. Um, but um, we are not convinced that uh, it's a good idea to have all the Max Planck Institutes also in foreign countries, because the laws are quite different. You know, if something happens with an institute in the United States, uh, it may be dangerous even for the mother uh, institute in Germany. Uh, so uh, the number of, of uh, lawyers increases normally if you go to uh, other countries and not uh, the number of scientists. So uh, therefore, because our uh, Max Planck Society, the body of the Max Planck Society are the directors. We are uh, representing the Max Planck Society. We are the responsible. We are like a private organization, like a football club or something. Uh, we are independent. We are not a government institute in this respect. We get the money to 98% of the government, but we are absolutely independent uh, as a, a social club. And uh, so, therefore, we can go bankrupt at any time in principle. But uh, many countries wanted to have a copy of the Max Planck Society. Uh, we had some requests from China, from uh, Korea, uh, from India, uh, but we decided not to have directly full Max Planck Institute, we want to have cooperation. So if people, scientists coming to our institute, staying there, 
going back to their country, they may get some support also from the Mustang society to build up an independent authority in their home country. And this is a, a good chance also for everyone who is coming as a guest, as a visitor to Mark Tank Society, going back. There are special programs to keep for limited time uh, cooperation and also get, to get, uh, get some money to build up uh, a research group in their own home country. Now I have some statistics uh, about the institutes. Uh, we have, uh, as mentioned, uh, 84 Mark Planck Institutes, five are abroad, uh, and different centers. So these are really, from the directors normally, some groups which are working in the same field. Our institute, I will show you later, we have some special connection to the Luzan and uh, to Vancouver and to Tokyo. Uh, but this normally depends on, on special connection of directors, and these are always for a limited time. So uh, these are statistics. I think very important is that we have big reservoir of uh, junior scientists, and more than half of them are foreigners. And even the directors, more than half of all the directors of Max Planck Society are foreigners. And this is very important to have this international openness. Uh, I don't know whether you should push it too far. I know in Japan they also feel that they need much more foreigners, but something becomes not stable if you have more than 50% foreigners, because uh, you have to identify uh, you with your institute. So I had once my group 16 different nationalities, but in principle uh, more than 50% foreigners <laughs> is also not, not a stable situation. So I think if you can reach 40-50%, this would be a fantastic situation. But this international connection is extremely uh, important. So here are the statistics, but I think it is not so uh, important. So the Max Planck Society, like in the Academy of Science, we have three sections. I will not go through them too much. Uh, human science section, and uh, the other section is the biology, biology and medicine section. And uh, I heard today that chemistry is uh, part of uh, this section of the year that we need, but we have the chemistry and the chemistry, physics and technology section, which is uh, the biggest section in, in the Max uh, Planck Society. So once more, the directors of all these institutes then form the body of the Max Planck Society. So we uh, generate also uh, creation of new institutes. Uh, if new directors are appointed, this will be organized by these sections. And the institutes which are involved, if you have to replace a new director, we have no vote on the selection of the new director because the selection of new directors is the most important part. Because afterwards, they get the freedom to do everything what they want in principle. Therefore, it's very important to select excellent people. And this is really a lot of work, but this is very important to select good people and give them the freedom. And uh, one big portion of this chemistry, physics, technology section is the solid state research and uh, material science. And uh, our institute is one of the biggest one just in the field of solid state material and uh, research. And I will say just a few slides about our Max Planck Institute for Solid State Research. I mentioned it's located in, in Stuttgart, and you will see here uh, the location where we have two Max Planck Institute. So the president was at the Metal Research, but now we have a new name. And this is also an important part. The original idea is that around an excellent person an institute is formed. So at the beginning, the Max Planck Society had one person, and then around this person, a Max Planck Institute was formed. And if this person dies, in principle, there was an idea to close down the institute. But you cannot do this for the infrastructure. If you have technician, secretary. So therefore, we decided to have always larger institutes, at least three directors. In our institute, Max Planck Institute, we have nine directors uh, in, in Stuttgart. And so that if one director retires, we have not to close down the whole institute. But we are not replacing the director, we are thinking about new direction. 
And if more than half of the directors of an institute retires in a uh, time of three years, then there will be an external committee who decides whether the general direction of the institute should be changed. And this has happened with our neighboring institute, was Metal Research. And there are a large number of directors retired in a certain time, and therefore it was an external commission to find out whether a new direction may be important. And this new direction was identified as intelligent system with robotics, with uh, recognitions of all kinds of things, to have interaction between machines and cellulose and so on. So uh, it's a new direction, uh, and this happens from time to time to close down or to change the direction of an institute. So we have these two Max Planck institutes in Stuttgart, and uh, Stuttgart perhaps is known to mo uh, most of you of the cars uh, because Mercedes, Porsche uh, have the headquarters there. And therefore, we have a lot of connection to the car industry of the Bosch company is there. Half of my students going after the PhD, they are not staying in research, they go to industry. Uh, most of them are present to, to Bosch because Bosch is one of the few companies which have their own research center close to Stuttgart, and they have really the idea to give the researchers on Friday a free day to think about new ideas, yes, and, and to have uh, some floor where they have some new innovation centers. Uh, I hope this will be successful to think about uh, new ideas for 10 years time. I can tell you a nice story. I met once uh, Hitachi, the president of Hitachi in Japan. And he told me, it's so difficult to keep good scientists in the, in the company because they want to earn money, they go to the production. To have a research laboratory in, uh, in industry is very, very difficult. Uh, so then he had the idea, we need some new ideas for the long term to have the advanced basic research laboratory to think uh, really what happens in 10 or 20 years time. Uh, but uh, it's very difficult if uh, the stock market asks what is, uh, what is coming out of this for the next uh, three months or for the next half year. Therefore, many, many companies uh, shut down the basic research laboratories. Um, but uh, as I mentioned to you, Bosch <coughs> is not on the stock market and they can think in the longer term and uh, they decide to have this research center close to Stuttgart. So this is uh, now uh, our institute in the green area. Uh, the, perhaps the president can uh, say something about this. Uh, we have the Solid State Research Institute, Intelligent System, and uh, just a new building, a precision laboratory, because today in nanotechnology, this is one of the focus of our research. You need very, very good environments, vibration-free, no uh, other uh, external distortions. So this is an own building, and inside this building we have 10 own buildings for a, a very fundamental uh, uh, research with noise reduction, with vibrational reduction, all kinds of things. So this is our precision laboratory. And uh, this is just an overview uh, the, of the focus of our uh, institute, condensed matter research at the frontier, quantum materials, nanostructures, sustainable energy, and we have theoretical physics, experimental physics, and chemistry. These are the three areas where we have these uh, activities. And uh, the international students, they like to contact, have contact with other Chinese students and other, other groups. So they have better connections uh, than the directors between the different departments. And uh, therefore, to have this interaction, uh, this is very fruitful because we have so many possibilities in the different departments and sometimes you don't know what are the resources. And to enforce the interaction between the groups, this is the main problem uh, for a director. Uh, and we have the rule, for example, that if somebody wants to publish something, we have an internal referee system that some other group member from other department have to read the paper and have to judge whether it's useful for publication. And very often they think, okay, this is an interesting topic. We should cooperate to solve some problems in this direction. 
So the internal referee system in an institute improves the interaction between the different departments. Okay, and then the external connection, we have some special connection uh, to the uh, uh, Lausanne, to the EPFA Center, uh, an agreement to, uh, with the University of Tokyo and uh, with a com uh, campus in Tokyo. Uh, I'm missing here, okay, also in Vancouver, we have some uh, cooperation. And the most uh, interesting thing is young people, attracting international young people. I heard also here, we have problems to attract uh, young students, scientists. We have the same problem in principle. So our directors, we are going once a year, or some representatives, just to China, a Peking University, there is a fair where normally the American universities sending their representatives to have interviews for the most bright students to catch the best students. So we are going directly to these fairs to tell them what they have the possibilities in our uh, institute. Many of them fear that they, uh, if you know English, then they cannot survive uh, in Europe, only in England. And they, they want to go to the United States originally. But today, most of the universities in Europe, you can uh, have lectures in English. And uh, in all the research institutes, the laboratory language is English. And so one has to be active to act, attack good people. Uh, because normally they just look at some uh, evaluation of universities, and therefore still Stanford, MIT, and these names come up. And in Europe, this is uh, Cambridge and Oxford, perhaps, uh, and Zurich. Uh, but if you look in detail, there are many, many other universities which are in the special areas even better than most of the other uh, high ranked universities. So we have uh, introduced in the Max Planck Society the International Max Planck. A research school because Max Planck Institute cannot give the PhD degree, therefore we have to cooperate with the uh, universities and therefore there is some agreement with the university to have this international Max Planck research school. And we are able to pay then the students from the grant of the international Max Planck research school and uh, then we are cooperating with our uh, neighboring uh, university. And we have now 67 of these uh, Max Planck uh, research schools with 3,000 PhD students. There's every half a year an open call for everyone in the world to apply for international Max Planck research school. And we get too many applications. We get every half a year more than 150 applications. 10 will be invited for interviews and 5 will be accepted. So the success rate is uh, from 155 uh, each half year. Uh, because we get too many uh, applications from some countries in India or uh, uh, which uh, are not the best level if they are not from the IIT. <coughs> so uh, I think this is very important to, to have the reservoir of, of good brains and good people to organize uh, such schools, for example. Uh, so we have this uh, school, we call this the uh, Condensed Matter uh, Science Center. And uh, we are involved in not only one school, we have uh, also with the other schools uh, in, in Lausanne, for example, uh, Molecular Nano uh, Science and Technology School. But the main uh, activity is the International Max Planck Research School for Condensed Matter Science. So just recently, last year, we started to have a new program because I mentioned to you that the Max Planck Society has very good reputation worldwide, but many people or scientists don't know that we have more than 80 Max Planck Institutes. They think, okay, oh, yeah, I know Max Planck Institute, but uh, it's not the Max Planck Institute in Stuttgart or other places. And now we are trying to form uh, inter more strong interaction between the Max Planck Institute. So we have a coordinated program of, in our case, of six Max Planck Institutes which are working in similar field. And it's called the Joint uh, Max Planck Graduate Center for Quantum Materials. Because uh, quantum material is worldwide in strong activity. And we have different Max Planck Institutes which cover this field from different aspects. So we offer now 
a combined educational system, but we have that mainly by television screens, the common lectures, common interactions, uh, between different uh, institutes. So we want to have a reputation for certain fields for different Max Planck Institute to attract good students if, if they are interested in this field uh, of uh, quantum materials. Okay, uh, but in addition, you need also support from other organizations. And uh, you know, Max Planck Society is only one area of research in Germany which is focused on basic research. And uh, when I give talks about the importance of basic research, I, I like basic research. But one needs always an equilibrium. One needs also from basic to the uh, applied research. And when I was in Vietnam, the minister told me, OK, I will want to invest all money in basic science. He said, this is not a good idea. You need good equilibrium between basic science then the interaction with the industry, and uh, you finally have to transfer the knowledge uh, to uh, the industry. And fortunately in Germany we have a structure there, not only the Max Planck Institute for basic research, we have our institute, but we should uh, mention the, the Helmholtz Institute, the Leibniz Institute, we have... Uh, uh, still more? No. Oh, I'm missing here. I oh, have yeah, Fraunhofer Institutes. They are very important because they have to bridge then the knowledge from research to the industry. Industry and they have to uh, get 50% of their income money from from industry. So, and we have special programs to interact from Max Planck Society to the Fraunhofer Institutes because very often also in basic science you have something which is close to the application, and then we have special cooperation with the Fraunhofer Institutes to. Uh, transfer our knowledge to the Fraunhofer Institute, we have much more interaction to the industry. So, uh, therefore, you need the whole infrastructure to be successful in science. And uh, Max Planck is just the peak of the, of the science, and we have to do excellence. So, we have to be at the top. And uh, therefore, um, okay, we need everything. So, uh, uh, I showed yesterday my talk, uh, the picture of, of uh, the highlight of the Nobel Prize, the dinner. Uh, I couldn't enjoy it too much when I got the Nobel Prize because you have to give a speech uh, uh, at the dinner. And I'm always nervous if I have to give a speech. But I looked at the homepage of the Nobel Foundation and I found my speech. Mm -hmm. at, already at this time, <coughs> 30, uh, four years ago, I, I mentioned this basic research offers the best opportunity of reaching uh, cross borders and overcoming ideological barriers. And uh, I'm very often invited by politicians if they have political problems that as I, as a scientist, should join them to go to some official visit of another country when in China was the demonstration of the students, uh, the first official visit, scientists uh, were. Uh, were team of the, of the government, because scientists, we have always a good connection to scientists, and this is wonderful to speak the same language because there is no interpretation of physical laws, they are the same everywhere in the world. And therefore, uh, as a scientist, it's quite fantastic to be a member of, of the world. Um, sometimes I show the last picture. Um, I had once met Neil Armstrong. Neil Armstrong was the first man on the moon. And uh, we had some discussion. He said, when I was staying on the moon, I looked on the Earth as a whole, I discovered for the first time that the United States is not in the center of the universe. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel much more responsible for the Earth as a whole, not for my own country. And I think as a scientist, you should really work for the world, world as a whole and not for just for your own profit uh, because we have many problems and then automatic global share, uh, warming and all these problems come up. But we cannot solve this uh, country by country. We have to solve this uh, for the world as a whole. And therefore, scientists, they have the possibility to have this network which is all over the world. And it's wonderful to have this feeling to have friends everywhere in the world. Thank you. Thank you very much.
much for this very excellent introduction. Uh, my proposal is to have a discussion after my short uh, speech after the professor from Klitzing, if you agree, and then we will open discussion for everybody. It's okay? Okay. Professor, if you like, you can sit there. Uh, during this presentation, I had in mind uh, what uh, I have a common with the Nobel Prize winner. Uh, only one thing is that I spent almost two years in, in the same place, uh, unfortunately. And uh, to, to, to give evidence that I was there, uh, I remember there was a very short street, Klaus von Klitzing, which was just uh, the street which are coming to the, to the entrance of the Max Planck. It's still there? That was the evidence that I was on the place, uh, just because we haven't uh, agreed this before. So there was uh, six streets and uh, once more I found in Berlin a street and I was surprised to find it in Potsdam, close to Berlin. It was East Germany and I wanted to know what is the origin of this. I uh, had made a telephone call to the mayor and uh, said, you are still alive? <laughs> oh, who say it's not allowed to have a live person in the street? <laughs> uh, okay, I, I will open the presentation. <clears throat> And during the presentation, I, I thought what are the similarities and dissimilarities uh, between the Max Planck and Slovak Academy of Sciences. I will not uh, count all of them because we have not enough time for that. But uh, first, the similarity which I consider as a very important is that uh, Slovak Academy of Sciences is too much national. Uh, to my best knowledge, we have no no, no one director, which is for even uh, If I count it, maybe we have approximately 10% of foreign students. When I, when I count my 18 PhD students, which successfully finished, I'm in the good side. I have um, more than 30%. But it's not the general rule in Slovak Academy of Sciences. That means that international is to make the academy international is very important. The number two, which is very important, the philosophy of the Max Planck, that the excellent person created an institute. In our framework, we have an institute, 60 years old, and we look at the person, just to follow the same. I don't know, but there are the hints, uh, which are really different. The, the third dissimilarity, which is also very important, and maybe that is why I, I made this presentation in that, that sense, that the Germany is in the luxurious uh, condition. That means they have a Max Planck Society, Fraunhofer, Leibniz, Helmholtz, and, and, and some others. Uh, in Slovakia, we have just the Slovak Academy of Sciences, because all these institutions are non-university research uh, bodies. And in Slovakia, we have only one non-university research body, it's Slovak Academy of Sciences, with presently 50, uh, 45 institutes. And some of them are good in the basic science, some of them are good in the applied science, and the rest is somewhere in between. And that is what we need to change somehow. But just to start my presentation, uh, I will start uh, with a uh, slide, which I got from the our Ministry of Economy, which says that uh, Slovakia is in a good conditions because uh, our uh, GDP is growing uh, after the crisis which we have. Uh, we are comparing to the Poland, Czech Republic uh, and Hungary, maybe in the better conditions compared uh, with respect to these numbers. And when we uh, get, uh, when I look for the new numbers for the, this year and the next year, it looks quite well. That means that Slovakia is in a quite good economical conditions, condition. And uh, our Ministry of Economy says that we have a highly qualified human resources. I agree. This is why it's here this smile. Uh, we have a dedicated national research and de uh, development strategy. 
Uh, with growing research and development investments, I'm saying it's not completely true. If somebody in the audience uh, disagrees, I can discuss it. Uh, we have uh, the, our ministry considered that in this country we have uh, foreign research and development centers uh, and technological clusters. I don't agree. It doesn't work in this country because we have a lot of foreign companies which makes the economy of the Slovak Republic healthy, but they did, didn't create any research and development center in the country. Uh, they also consider that we have uh, established good cooperation between the industry and domestic universities. I will ask my colleagues from the university whether it's true. I don't think so. And uh, that we have a broad research and development innovation network. Maybe yes, maybe not. And maybe uh, we have uh, some incentives for research and development in Slovakia. That is uh, a statement of the Ministry of Economy and uh, that are my comments to this. When we have this uh, environment, uh, this ecological system, do we have in Slovakia some innovative companies? Uh, yes, we some have. Uh, Sajik Asset is present here. Uh, we have, uh, these are the IT companies, we have this engineering company and uh, some uh, new materials company which are, are dealing with a very uh, excellent and uh, interesting things. But uh, are they com these companies exceptions or the result of the system which we have in Slovakia? Let's go to the basic uh, graphs which everybody of us knows that when we have a look to the research and development investment uh, the Japan is on the highest level. Uh, I haven't here uh, Germany, I have the European 28 countries. If you have a look how the China is growing up, and somewhere here is the United States. Uh, the Slovakia is somewhere here. And that is the first thing. The Slovakia is on the bottom. I will repeat it several times during my presentation, you will see. When we have a plenty of countries, these are the European countries. I'm sorry, it's maybe not too much visible. Shut down the, the light. Uh, when Slovakia is here, we are less than 1% in uh, uh, research and development in 2016. Uh, I use as a, as a comp for the comparisons of Slovenia because I have uh, two reasons. The far first reason is that they many times replace the Slovakia and Slovenia, the people also in the Europe. And uh, the second point, we have more or less the same history. We had uh, communism in the previous time, maybe the Yugoslavia is, was a bit better. And now we have a, a 30 years development as an independent state. And you can see that the investment in Slovakia, in Slovenia to the R&D is uh, on the level 2%. And uh, that is why we have a guest from Germany. I always uh, 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 show the Germany and Germany is on the level about 3%. Of GDP to the uh, research. The structure is much more important. I will skip this slide because it's, uh, it says uh, that business uh, and uh, the private sector uh, invest in the Slovakia not so much as in uh, Slovenia. And here is much better uh, visible. Uh, we invest, we have uh, from the private sector less than 30% investments to the research and development. In Slovenia, it's about 70 percent. It's a ra rather big difference, and Germany is more or less in the same level. From this, we are getting back to the to the to the conclusions conclusion of Professor von Klitzing that we need to have an intimate contact between the, the excellent basic research and also with the application, because from this applica uh, application research. We, we get a sub, something which we call as an innovation factor. An innovation factor gives the country the, 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 the note how the country is able to use research and development, the knowledge for the improving the, the, the living standards uh, in the technology. Slovakia, we are the moderate innovator. Uh, Slovenia is a strong innovator. And Germany uh, is here as uh, innovation leaders. Uh, that is the big 
big difference and it's not only, uh, I don't know whether it's just because of high investment to the research and development or it's also reflected by the structure that the private sector invests to the research and development too much, I don't know. But definitely, this is the true, because, or true. this is coming from the, some statistic of, of, of Everstar. And now I make a maybe unfair connection to the limit, uh, okay, this is again the innovation factor, Slovakia. We have 64% of the uh, average in Europe, this factor. Slovenia has 92% uh, of average in Europe. And when we have a look to the Germany, it's 123% of average Europe. And now I will make this unfair uh, connection to the living standard or to the wages. And when you have a, oh, oh yeah, here is, I will, okay, sorry. I, uh, here, I, I, I just try to demonstrate that we have here the much, much uh, higher innovation factor uh, in Slovenia comparing to Slovakia. We have almost the same production of GDP per capita. We have more or less the easy of starting business uh, that means the conditions are similar because this number is 75 and this number is also about 75. That means easy to start a business in Slovakia and Slovenia is the same. What is the problem? That top research and development uh, enterprises per 10 million population we have a zero. But uh, Slovenia has almost 18 and average in the Europe is 19 or 20. That means it's something, something different in Slovenia compared to Slovakia. I don't know why. And now it's going to this unfair comparison. That we have strong innovator in Slovenia. Uh, Slovakia is a moderate innovator. And when you go to the average wages of the population in the country, and I will just to attract your uh, attention to the July 2018 in Slovenia, the, the average wages was 1,600 euro, while in Slovakia it was just 1,100 euro. That means difference 500 euro. It's too much, I think. Uh, now it's just like a joke. I will show the average wages in Germany. It's uh, 3,000. That means. Uh, Slovenia is, has a 50% and we have uh, one third. Uh, uh, please, I'm saying that it's not very fair uh, to attract these things together, but I think they have some connections together. Okay, and I will conclude uh, this uh, with a questioner. Are the rich countries rich because they invest to the research and development? or they invest to the research and development because they are rich. Uh, my opinion is here. That I, I think that this, this country are rich because they invest too much. And uh, from, the, from the budget of the state, from the private companies, and now the first point for the discussion, is this true? And by this last question, I will open the discussion to all the things which we have uh, heard today. <coughs> Let's go. Where is the mic? Ah, yeah. Uh, do you have any question or do you have a comment to my presentation or whatever? <laughs> not, not really. I just, just can tell you, I just invited to China to promote basic science. Because China, they have also the Academy of Science. Originally, it was an idea also like the Max Planck Society. But then they shifted more and more to have in-house also the production. So really from, from basic science to the production. But now they see they need more, more support for basic science. So they have a special conference in the uh, end of this year the importance of basic science for uh, economy. Uh, I don't know whether they analyzed uh, the success of their change, uh, but uh, this indicates if you have money, if you have the possibilities, you know 
that investment basic science may be important for the future. But uh, you need money to for support basic science. So it's very difficult to answer this question. Uh, what is the uh, interdependence between yeah. money and, and the success? Yes. yes, yes, I agree. If there is no no uh, question from the audience, I, I will open the, another question. Mm -hmm. Have we a chance to obtain, uh, to be uh, a leader in the research and innovations? What are the conditions to reach this goal? And uh, my question, have we a chance to obtain a Nobel Prize? <laughs> what to do? <laughs> okay, increase the investment to the research and development is the question. Is there some critical value or whatever? Yes, depends on the number of committee. Follow? No, 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 it's not a job, but it depends okay. uh, uh, of members of committee, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we yesterday learned that you can buy it in a Nobel Prize. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> medal, medal, not a Nobel yeah, Prize. But uh, today more and more countries want to buy excellent scientists also. Yes. And then during the last 10 years, there was such a big change from the offers from, from uh, Korea, from Singapore, even Hong Kong. Uh, uh, I could earn 10 times more money if I go to other country, even as a, a German uh, yes. scientist. And in former times, scientists said, OK, I'm happy with science, but this has changed. So uh, if you cannot offer a good salary, then you have already problems because this is a global market now. Uh, so uh, yes, this I, is very difficult now. I agree. Uh, for instance, the China they have a program 50 plus. Yeah. That means they attract not just the young people but also the people which are in the fruitful age or how it's say. <laughs> <laughs> it's not all, but they the, are yeah. experienced people. Yes, yeah. Peter. Uh, 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 so to start the discussion, let me rise. Yeah. Few points. I, it was uh, very beautiful your, your your lecture. Unfortunately, I had no chance to to, look, to attend yesterday's so talk. But uh, let me say that, of course, uh, we are probably all convinced that Max Planck uh, Max Planck is one of the best, not only places but also institutions to make uh, fundamental research. Uh, but there is still uh, one better option, I think, and I think we both to have Max Planck Institute in France, in Grenoble. In Grenoble, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but it was a daughter institute of uh, Stuttgart. That was, a, that was a kind of joint venture. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Part of your Nobel Prize also. <laughs> yes, Thanks yes, to yes. the high Hochfeld Magnetic Hochfeld Magnetic Hochfeld 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 I was also uh, in Grenoble, yeah. In Grenoble with Peter Reeder several years. Oh! Starting in the early 90s. And this was a fantastic place for physics. And for international connections, so the making point uh, skiing and also French <laughs> yeah. So I think this is this is very big advantage to be a uh, scientist, first of all. But uh, what I want to raise is, uh, of course, then afterwards uh, Max Planck withdraw from 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 this uh, institution there in the Hoffman One Laboratory. But I think. There's still a very good option, and this somehow is connected to the questions which we may, uh, which we may uh, discuss here, is to make maybe not a very big, large-scale facilities like uh, European Synchrotron or something like this, but to make a distributed uh, version of laboratories. For example, for high magnetic fields. Yeah, nine million and two So, uh, so yes. my first question to you is, uh, what do you think about this kind of uh, maybe not block focused in one place, but in distributed uh, laboratories like, what is the situation now with this uh, high magnet field laboratory? Getting all together this Nijmeg and Berlin, yeah. Dresden, <coughs> and Grenoble, Toulouse and all this. Okay, okay. they are concentrating on the special topics, but the problem is, uh, in America, it's a lot of money, and if you are not at the top, so you have the question, should we invest 10 times more money to be at the top? Or should we invest in other direction? Today, I see the problem if you have a big institute, if you want to change something, you have other responsibilities and you are not able to change it. So let's just ask the question, if the people at CERN say, OK, we have no future, you should close down, a responsible director cannot say this. Mm -hmm. So you have responsibilities to keep something running, even if you think, the investment would, would be better in other directions. 
Uh, so therefore, uh, I, uh, the big, big institutions, you cannot change too much then afterwards. So this was a difficult decision to uh, go out of the Grenoble uh, Corporation because we knew we had to invest much more money to be at the top level. So therefore, we made this difficult decision. Now we finish it. The same difficult decision is if you close down an institute. But it's necessary to have this renewable. And uh, if a uh, director retires, he should be happy if some other areas come up. Because if you are a successful scientist, you should be happy that you uh, covered this area. And uh, then new areas should be open. Uh, but this is sometimes very difficult. So therefore, we have to be very careful also with big institutions, and these distributed institutions uh, are very important, but just go to other places which are the top level uh, institutes. So therefore, the flexibility to go to the best places, this is very important. So I got my Nobel Prize because I was a free scientist at the time when I went to the Nobel. I uh, knew this is the best place in Europe to do research in high magnetic fields, and I was a free scientist. I got uh, so-called Heisenberg grant from the government, so just my own salary, but nothing, no security, nothing else. Uh, but I could go to the best places and had this flexibility. And this is success. Uh, you, you answered uh, indirectly the question whether we have a chance to obtain a Nobel Prize. Is there any free scientist who has no project? He's just living from the institutional money and feel himself free? <laughs> the bottom. <laughs> <clears throat> yes, uh, I definitely have no money research money. I decided five years ago that it makes no sense. But essentially, you preach here to, to the converted. All of us would sign to everything you said about how to organize science, how basic research is important. <coughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> oh man. Uh, it would be so much nicer if you talk to those who make decisions yeah. in this country. Because they make for 30 years terrible decisions that concern science. They 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 been essentially misled by many in the scientific community that science can save the economy and similar stuff. Which obviously Solzhenitsyn sort of said one day that physicists are most opportunistic scientists. And that's really true. And that kills the science in Slovakia as one point. The other point is essentially would any so how many lady scientists are there in this audience? How many lady scientists are in this audience? Okay, don't, don't be shy. So this is, this is something which is very, very typical. Essentially, the, the man-dominated culture in science in Slovakia, which is again ruining the science in the... I mean, so, the, so that's one of the observations. The other observation would be that probably we are, in my honest opinion, we are not able to resolve the problem of the science in Slovakia by, by ourselves. And it concerns science, and it concerns the universities. Because in order to have a good science, you need good universities. This is connected. Mm -hmm. And this was so devastating. So devastating. All good students from Slovakia, and we can give you numbers, go abroad. So this, this is such a desperate situation here. That I'm really honestly convinced that, that there's not much of a hope for us. If, and now is the sort of kind of the, the, the maybe the only solution here might be that we really uh, have very close collaborations with institutes abroad that would help us to resolve the problem because we do not invest in good people here in this, in this country. We invest in institutes. Essentially, the budget goes main, mostly to the institute. So, if you are talented, the institute will kill you. Essentially, but that's yeah. I, I know that you are. But so, so this is a very serious problem. But okay, I, I just but don't. There some problems that you can come back and you build. Uh, yeah, but not who would yeah. come back? Who would come back under these conditions? Yeah, so, come back to the Macrack Society and keep you connected to the uh, Institute yeah. of Macrack to this get money from the Macrack Society yeah. to build up an independent group at the Home Institute. Uh, yes, but this is, yes, yes. I mean, that's in, that, that in principle works. But essentially, now I, I speak that because it's, I really enjoyed your talk yesterday. 
and, and it was so, so lovely. I think that theorists finally would celebrate 20th of May, 20th of May, okay. because we always put H bar equal one, C equal one, and we are so happy with that. That these are the numbers. We do not need the the error bars around C and error bar about about that. But what is more impo important, I think, that this is something where the challenge of physics stands. That and you mentioned the gravitational constant that is essentially missing the system. But we know that instead of gravitational constant, we can put fundamental mass or fundamental length. There are these are the, the, the units, fundamental, which are missing in our system. And uh, that's really interesting. What would be those? And how they would be related to foundational? Because they are related to the structure of the space time. Like in this fundamental length, we do not know. And, uh, so, so, so this is something that is the most challenging question behind that, is what are, why these numbers are as they are? Is there any underlying theory that might provide us with numerical values yeah, for, yeah, for, for yeah. this? You know, the court of the Feynman that... Yeah, sure, sure. In the same yeah. there are our as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so, sorry for... Okay, but, but you started about the problem support of science and government. But put yourself in the position of a, uh, of a minister. Uh, so I have many meetings. They tell me, you will get enough money as you want, as long as people will elect us uh, for the next term. Yeah, I so therefore we have the responsibility and the newspapers, everyone, that the public is in favor of you. Yes? But so, so, this is uh, just an impression because you have to compete with other uh, demands. Sure. Yes? And, and, uh, therefore, it's our duty also to, to uh, encourage the public to say, OK, this is important for our future. Then we will change something. And then the politicians will act on, on the on public meeting. That's why I like the Friday demonstration now, uh, because uh, th then the pressure comes from the bottom. Yes? And then you have to think about it. Yes? The, uh, and uh, this should happen also to science. So you, you have to, uh, and I'm happy to see that even the newspaper now puts more uh, activity on, on science, yes? It's difficult because the majority of people are, don't understand it and they look only at the negative aspects of science. The science is not so so expected in the majority in the public than you, you assume, yeah? So uh, you have to be active also. I completely agree that in the last uh, village uh, in the pub, when <coughs> somebody says the Slovak Academy of Sciences is important, that we are not probably the politicians, but uh, it's a long, a long way to come there. Mm -hmm. I have one, one correction. The Slovak Academy of Sciences is ideal portion of uh, women and men, because we have a social sciences, biology, and whatever. We have uh, slightly more women, I think that is 52 or 53 person in the academy. The question is how big percentage is on the leading positions. That is not so ideal. Good. Uh, now, uh, Marina, you like to ask something? <laughs> um, I would like to say something. Yes, please. <laughs> okay. uh, I, I'm not a good judge of the situation here in Slovakia. I have been here for a long time. But uh, there the were very important words here that resonated with me. And it was uh, trust, uh, freedom, and responsibility. And these are the three things that I have learned uh, while I was abroad. When I left, I felt like a, like a person that I um, I don't have any responsibility and nobody trusts me with, with anything. I don't want to be too dark, but this is how I felt. And uh, when, uh, when I went to my postdocs, I suddenly learned how important is it to give trust to another. And to trust each other, for example, with big money also. This is our problem that we don't trust each other, we don't trust each other with the money. This is what I feel when I come back here. That, that, that I, I'm a better judge than you. This is the number one problem that I see. Um, I suddenly <coughs> found, I found myself in a laboratory, but I was given a complete trust that I would be <coughs> heading the whole uh, theoretical research. And uh, I was like, who am I? I'm nobody. I never did any lead, uh, leadership position. Uh, how can somebody give me such position? Uh, I'm not the right person. He will soon realize that I will fail. This is how I felt. And through this experience, I, I learned that no, this is the opposite effect. That we have to give a big trust to person, and this gives the person the strength and also the enthusiasm to do things. So it's something I would like to 
for the growth. Thank you very much. Uh, I need to know that she left the institute when I was the director. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I, I put another question because we touched it slightly. Uh, everybody who has, I think, who is sitting in the room, uh, understand the, the enormous importance of, of the fundamental basic, basic research. But uh, of course, from the political point of view, from the politicians, and even from the industry in this country, we are forced, and they are asking us to, to do something like applied research. And here in Slovakia, is a big misunderstanding. Because, uh, and that is my question to you, what do you consider as applied research? Is this that you are excellent, you are on the frontiers of the basic research and then comes the idea and you apply this idea? Or it's like a service, because our industry likes to have a service. We have a problem, please solve the problem because we are researchers and they consider this as an applied research. And, uh, do you feel the difference what I, what I mentioned? Yeah, but to solve problems is, is very difficult. So, uh, you know big problems, you can say it's a nice problem, but even with infinite money you cannot solve this problem perhaps in the short term. It must be by accident that you have some new ideas, new routes. Uh, we are trying different ways uh, to go in this direction, but you never can come with something. <coughs> but I think I discovered if the industry says this is our problem, they don't like to say we have a problem because it's already secret, uh, then many scientists in my group say, okay, I can solve this. And they like, so we need to increase the interaction to have trust on the working level with people. Therefore, I said, if an industry has a small group also working on the same level, all scientists are happy to interact with other people. And all basic scientists are happy to apply their knowledge, but they know exactly that many, many uh, knowledge needs a long time. But if you go back, if you have breakthroughs, you can trace back to some discoveries or some uh, uh, innovations. Yes. Um, so we have the same language with the industry, or we need some uh, somebody who will translate. With the lawyers, I cannot speak. Yes. Oh, yeah, yes. Maybe very technical question in this line. Max Planck is a typical fundamental research organization. Do you produce patents? Yes, they are asked us to uh, file patents. I'm not a trader of it, but uh, our external review committee always asked, did you file patents? But uh, in our field, we are working in, in uh, nanoelectronics, and so it is really. Uh, if they are some successful, we have always feelings the industry, they want to uh, avoid to buy the patents from the Thermomark Tank Society. Uh, so, uh, okay, we are enforced to demonstrate that we have patents, but most patents are uh, small new equipment, uh, but not uh, really from the basic research. Weizmann, they are quite Successful. Also in, in biology, we have a lot of uh, mainly some uh, small equipment to have uh, some screening or some uh, special, mainly for research applications. Uh, so there we are successful, but uh, uh, the total balance is no profit from patents. Even we, we spend more money uh, to fight patents. And we have the good situation that one third of the income goes directly to the person, one third to the institute, and one third to our patent office of Smart Bank Society. So you have a kind of technology transfer office and that. Yes, we have a special. Uh, and, and, okay, and in biology they are quite successful. And they, they support us if we file uh, some patents. And uh, one institute uh, lifts just from the income from uh, patents, yes. Uh, Professor, I, I will try to connect uh, three things uh, because uh, there were several things that caught my attention uh, during your speech. One of them was you are also facing the problem of people kind of uh, being brain drained or uh, uh, being attracted to other institutions and to other countries because Mark, Max Planck Institute, I understand, is one of the top world institutes, but still you have those places like MIT, Oxford, Caltech that are probably even more famous. 
And so then we are in a situation that um, the whole world is um, kind of converted to marketing. Everybody is competing for, uh, for some kind of uh, space under the sun. And so, and you said one interesting thing, that you said to a politician that you will ruin my job if you suddenly increase the, uh, the funding uh, 10 times, for example. And so, I'm asking a question that is actually a question that I'm facing myself in, in, in my company, and it is young people coming to your institute and they want to achieve big things. They want to win Nobel Prizes and so on. And I wouldn't be surprised if they tell you, if you really want to be at the top of our science, and if you want to compete with all these big names like Caltech or whoever, we need to invest more, we need to have uh, more money, we need to, and I think uh, you are, as a director, in a position to somehow respond to that and say, like, maybe it's not only about the money and how much money we can quickly add to the, to the research, but it must be some other fundamentals that make the difference. Yes, money is not uh, everything. I think the interaction with other groups, with other people, I tell always my students, you have, you have to be specialized in a certain field, but then you have to cooperate with some different fields where you can give your uh, own input. Uh, and um, uh, you have to use your flexibility if some equipment is not available in the institute to go somewhere else. Uh, and, but the tendency, if, if you have too much money, you want to be independent. I see this with all the group leaders. They uh, will quit the corporation because they okay, they have interesting equipment. I will buy the same equipment now that I'm independent. Right. Uh, so this is a tendency. So uh, therefore, uh, uh, too much money is sometimes uh, kills the research. Yes, kills, kills the interaction with other people. Yes, uh, and I, I think. Uh, I always introduce that we have three times a day coffee to bring together uh, the group members. Uh, this interaction, and to have free time to discuss, and to ask questions, uh, we have been missing this more and more now, yes? Yeah. Okay, yes. let's move on, uh, Stalin. Uh, and I, I put uh, another I question. I have a very uh, personal question. Have you ever thought that we will be a Nobel Prize winner? And my second question is, uh, uh, what were the most important things in your scientific life? The first uh, question, can you repeat the first question? Yeah, but uh, yeah. I, I, I was thinking about Nobel oh, okay. Prize. Yes. <laughs> so if somebody has told me at school, if you study physics, you may get the Nobel Prize, I would say, okay, I will never do it. Because it was a very shy person, and to stay in such an audience, to see such people, this was a terrible idea for me. Uh, but I have to survive and to live with this. Uh, and, so, and if somebody says he's working for the Nobel Prize, I think this is a bad mind. Uh, uh, you should not never work if you look at the probability, it's too small. And, uh, it's not a good behavior. Uh, if somebody is just working for this, you, you have to be lucky. And uh, very often, if I speak to other prize winners, they discover something unexpected. And, and then you need the freedom to, to look at this in more detail, to change your uh, direction. Therefore, I'm fighting for freedom in, in, in basic science, at least. Um, so this was the uh, first question. So what uh, my biggest uh, disappointment was when uh, I liked science and research, and when I made my habilitation at the university, what to do in the future? I applied in industry, and the industry told me you are overqualified, you will be unhappy. <laughs> So this was a shock for me. Okay, here's the next question. Okay, I have this question. Uh, in Germany and in my spices, I understand the only way how to change the topic is if the director retires. Yes, this yeah. is the ba basic method. If the mo more than two percent of the director, but, uh, yeah. but nevertheless, uh, now the line is uh, speeding up. New and new topics are appearing. Uh, very often and more often than in the last time. So do you have any other mechanism how to decide that okay let's stop this topic, start another Each one? Each director has a freedom. 
So I told you I can go to brain research if I have a clever idea and I'm at the top in this field. And I have uh, now the feeling too many of our scientists go into biological system because uh, this is much more, you can sell uh, results in this field, but it's so difficult to have to produce results. And, and if you come from a physicist to biology, I try also sometimes to go in this field. But I, I went back to okay. produce uh, science, it is too complex. Systems. So and then he uh, gets another budget of money because of No, we have our budget for our lifetime. We okay. have it. Okay. So uh, we have just to demonstrate after six years that you catch up internationally, yes? Okay. Thanks. Uh, let's move to my other question. Are they different? I mean the fundamental and applied research? What are the differences? Based on your experience, or no, it's just a time constant. Yeah. So, uh, uh, if you go back, all fundamental research is used to build up on this knowledge uh, something else. If you can tell me some some breakthroughs which cannot be traced back to some fundamental discoveries, I think. Uh, uh, but the time constant. This is the main question. Many many problems. The time. Yes. Uh, and, and industry, you have time constant if you're on the stock market for three months or something like this. And uh, this is it's hopeless and, uh, to predict something you know, in basic science. Yeah. Yeah. The, the answer is that it's only good research. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter whether it's fundamental or applied. Yeah, it's it's right? it's, uh, not yet applied is the basic research the definition, yes. Uh, what we should do as a small country? Should we invest? Because the, my first is to increase the investment of research and development. And now we are facing the question, we have not enough money. Should we focus on some specific area or support it generally? That is the question which we are facing in this country. And, and, and I, will, I will tell you my, my opinion. That we, we, we have uh, 45 institutes and my opinion, unlike to the uh, opinion of Vlado Buzek, I say that all these 45 institutes should run on the idle. Not too much money, but, but keep them in life. And to, to collect the money and invest to the best. Because to cancel the institute is very easy. But open it again. And yeah, I usually use the example of the graphic. Because in, uh, 20 years ago, when I will apply it to the, our grant agency, that I like to test the sink, which is which remains on my writing by the, by the pencil, on the paper, they will say to me that I'm crazy. And now everybody is doing that. It's uh, very exciting. Mm -hmm. And uh, when, I, I, when I will come with this idea, the people tell me to close the institute because he's stupid. And that, that is my argument, to, to keep the, all the institutes which we already have, mm -hmm. but the support the best. I don't know what is your idea. Okay, in a certain way, also universities, they have to focus on some topic where they are excellent. So you need uh, some renommé uh, to say, okay, we belong to the top group worldwide in this special area, and uh, to bring together other people to join this group, I think this is the only way uh, to have really also to attract people. Uh, on the other hand, I, I always like the freedom of individual. This is always a compromise. But bring together different groups to interact, to have a beer, to drink uh, with wine. I had always my good cooperation, my good uh, ideas, just in the evening sitting together and have some time to discuss and then write down, and this is my problem, and this is your problem, and how can we uh, can do something? It depends always on people, to bring together people which want to interact and want to cooperate. I think this is uh, I fully agree. Most important my, things. my best projects and cooperation are coming from the guest house in Bisnau, where we drink the beer and, and wine together with, yeah. uh, in the international yeah. community. Yeah. I agree. Uh, please go ahead. Uh, basically, in my view, just uh, the question is, uh, is uh, special prospective areas is absolutely in contrary to the idea of Max Planck yes. Institute because yes. because you kill all natural initiative and knowledge because some people have knowledge in a completely different area and you have <coughs> Uh, thank you for this answer because that is a question which uh, frequently is raised from the politician here. 
uh, to us. And uh, I, I agree with the uh, mm -hmm. idea of Max Planck. Do we have a still a few, a few minutes? Okay. Uh, 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 so, I have a very easy question. Um, you recommended inter interdisciplinary approach. What is your experiences between uh, two different different sides, uh, humanities and, and uh, science? What is your experiences, and uh, do you have some best practices with, with, with this cooperation? In practical, nobody in our institute has this cooperation. This, this two different, two big steps. Yes, we have already difficult to bridge. Physics and chemistry is already uh, different languages in science. Uh, and we are optimistic that in the future we will have uh, better understanding of biological systems. Uh, uh, but uh, to the humanities, therefore we have a different section, yes? Uh, I don't know. Perhaps in the future it will be more important. So uh, for me, it becomes more and more important in, in many of my lectures now and in my activities. But for the scientists, there is no connection. <coughs> I have a comment, if I may, to regards uh, to the question invest uh, generally or to the specific perspective areas. Uh, when I, my thought when I'm looking at this question comes in the direction that if we do have to ask this kind of question, <coughs> it means that we, we have no idea. Do we actually have an idea what we want to do? Um, yes. <laughs> so, so maybe we should start fr from this, because if, if I want to ask, do we want to invest generally or, or specific perspectives? It's so general, it's telling we have no idea. So uh, maybe we should start from from, from us. Yeah. It's very difficult. <laughs> Okay, uh, thank yeah, you. but it's true. Sometimes people ask me, do we have too many scientists because we are jumping on a new field, something comes up. This indicates that the old field was not good enough. Uh, and this happens more and more that today, today we have some mainstream new words and many, many people just to have publications. But this is also a question about citation and uh, publications. Uh, so this we didn't cover you now the pressure from yes, yes. from this evaluation process and all these things they press us to go to some fields which are known already yes and, and which are modern fields uh, therefore it's difficult to have new ideas and as you mentioned if you have something outside the mainstream you have difficulties yes, yes. when I discovered my kind of work I could not publish it because it was new yes. And the people said, okay, maybe crazy for a person. Yes. Yeah. The very crucial problem in Slovakia is not only people who are missing, who are leaving and not coming back, but uh, this will continue this way if we don't have fair funding. And this is, in my view, completely ill, sick area in, for Slovak scientists. Uh, I agree, and uh, unfortunately, uh, we who are sitting in the room, we understand. <laughs> and who, who should uh, make the decision is not in the room, and that is the main problem. Okay. Uh, I, I don't. Okay, maybe we should the next time invite the minister of finance or whoever. Uh, I, I, I'm skeptic about the influence, but anyway, we can try to, to start to discuss. Anyway, this helps uh, somehow. What, what Professor von Klitzing has said, we need to get the public on our side. That is the only way how we can make a pressure on the politicians who has the money. Uh, otherwise, we can sit here 100 years and uh, maybe 10 the Nobel Prize winners can come here. They will don't listen to them. That, that is my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong. If somebody has another opinion, please uh, raise the hand. And okay, uh, now with the skepticism, we will close this very excellent session once more again. Thank you very much, from, uh, Mr. Professor. I would like to say, Mr. Vakman, Professor, Mr. Professor, for coming to, to Bratislava. Thanks a lot for the all people who, who was behind and who 
make this visit possible and I think that was very refreshing for us to have this two days, uh, yesterday's lecture and today's discussion. Thanks a lot and when we can make us some conclusion of this meeting. <laughs> Be optimistic. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. yes, yes, yes. Uh, the, the first conclusion is that we open more questions than the answer, answers. But, but a very important question is, or uh, the conclusion is that the uh, research is very important for the society, I think. And uh, our goal is to be free in research. How to reach this uh, excellent position, I don't know, but uh, to be free in your research, I think that is the, the best suggestion we, which we can got. And to support excellent people. I support excellent people. Well, okay. May I only yes. add that? What I feel is very, very important to close cooperation between uh, yes. Slovak Academy of Science and research universities, uh, right. and uh, to explain uh, to public why we are here and uh, that uh, that is necessary to be here. Okay. What is the profit for us? <laughs> okay. Thank you once more again for coming. Uh, here is a small refreshment. You are invited for the small discussions. Uh, among us and uh, once more again, thanks a lot.